we can create that inner peace by having permission to be who we are at our core essence and actually bring that to the world, bring that to the world in every aspect of who we are rather than dimming ourselves down for being too much or being a show off or all of these different things, which are shadows, which play out in different spectrums of those experiences. Well, we can just be who we are at our core essence and bring that to the world and understand that's actually what's required of us in this lifetime. Everything shifts for us. Everything starts to fall into place. We have all these synchronicities that occur. We start to have all of these perfect experiences that create this deep sense of fulfillment for us in every area of our life, not just business, not just relationships, all of it, the whole experience of all of the different areas of our life, spirituality, work, relationships, all of these areas can be lit up in every area, which is ultimately what it's all about. Because like you had this experience, I've had this experience. Most people have this experience where they've been absolutely nailing it in one area of life. And then everything else is kind of just falling apart in the background just a little bit. You're not even aware of it at the time. Hey there, my friend. Welcome to the Powerful and Passionate Healthcare Professionals Podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina. I am a cardiothoracic surgery PA with a background in public health and neuroscience. I'm also your peak performance coach. I had to say no to working extreme long hours where I was always on call and feeling exhausted, underappreciated, and undervalued, and said, heck yes, to a life and career that elevates my energy and passion without compromising my health and sanity. Now, I'm among the mission to support ambitious healthcare professional like you with a demanding career to become a confident leader who are living purposefully and fulfilled to truly be both a powerhouse in your career and a passionate person in life. Let's start our journey today. Hi, everyone. This is Sabrina, your host for the Powerful and Passionate Healthcare Professionals Podcast. Welcome to today's episode. And we have the honor of having Cody Nicola with us. And he is a speaker who specializes in taking leaders and teams from force to flow. And he does this by using the flow formula. Modality he created, which is based on testing people's epigenetic expression. Hmm, interesting. So we'll tap more into that. This means that leaders can understand how their brain works differently to others to ultimately get into flow and become superhuman. Wow, that is awesome. I want to know how to be a superhuman, Cody. (laughs) So tell us a little bit more about yourself and how did you come up with the formula? I started out in kind of the health industry about 11 years ago as a personal trainer and transitions through different roles within that from being a lecturer for Sports Nutrition Australia on the board for Sports Nutrition Australia and moving more into the mindset and performance space after I went through a period of depression. Basically, I was driving down the road one day and had like these tears streaming down my face because I rolled up to these traffic lights and was had this thought of if I could just drive into traffic and get taken out by a truck, I'd end my life, but it wouldn't look like a suicide because I couldn't put my family through that. And that was very much a turning point for me to get some help and actually become more focused on leading ourselves and doing the inner work to be able to create access to create what we need to be able to create within this lifetime. And part of that journey for me was going through that bottoming out experience so that I could then start to learn what I was here to be able to create in this lifetime. And part of that was born in that experience of bottoming out and having that very low experience of then creating, all right, well, what would a life of flow look like? What would it look like to create all of these experiences which created fulfillment for all of us in every area? Because when I went through that low, I had all the trappings of success. I was presenting all over the country. I was earning more money than I'd ever made before. And yet I still wasn't fulfilled. So in that experience, it was very much the birth of the flow formula in that experience to start to create flow for each and every person. Because after that experience, when I started working with more and more clients, they just kept saying, I just feel like I'm just in flow. And I had no idea what that was at that time. I was just like, I don't know what that is. Okay, cool. I better better look into it. And from that moment on, I just became obsessed with finding out what flow was and how to be able to create it. And eventually got to a point where I was like, well, what if I could create a proven predictable process to be able to create flow for each and every person? 
And that was very much the birth of the flow formula to be able to create that. And it was a combination of all the different things that I'd learnt around epigenetics, around mindset, around health, around all of these different aspects to be able to bring it together, to be able to create this all encompassing fulfilled life in every area, and not just like, not just in business, not just in, in relationships, but every area. And I know that's a passion of yours as well, to be able to create that fulfillment in every area, because in most instances, a lot of people will have one area, which is just absolutely amazing. And then other areas, which are lagging. And when we can create that life of true fulfillment, it's in all areas. When we're creating access to creating a superhuman life and a superhuman society, it's where we have all of our foundational needs met where we can actually live from our highest needs from growth and contribution. So we can create the capacity to live in this deep sense of fulfillment every single moment of every day, which is ultimately what I'm committed to creating. And that's the foundational concept of how and why I created the flow formula. That's amazing for you to come from a spot where you really hit that wall and then come out of that. That took so much courage as well. And I definitely personally can relate to that where you work and you keep going. You thought this is your aim, but at some time, even though you work so hard for something, but because you somehow tunnel vision into it, you're not seeing how it's actually affecting your body, your relationship. And then eventually we crash. And when we get sick and you got into an accident, I got really sick and then you realize your body gave you a huge warning and it's not a pretty <laughs> sign at all. Yeah. And to be able to go with the flow when people say, right, if we're just wanting to flow down the river and seeing all the beautiful signs, but what you're not seeing is all the rocks, all the random branches that come your way. And you're just thinking life is great. la di yada. Let me just keep going down. Eventually you're going to hit something. Yeah, amazing. And one of the core distinctions that I talk about with people is there's a big difference between creating flow in your life and then also going with the flow because a lot of the times you're going with the flow when you're one focus. It's just like, I'm just going in this direction rather than creating flow. And I love what the original person who coined the term flow, Mihai Cheksik Nihai, he talks about flow being this sense of deep fulfillment in everything that you do. So when you're actually going through any experiences and even when you're hitting those branches and those rocks in that process, then it's still enjoyable for you because you have this ultimate balance of challenge and skill. Like flow occurs at the border of support and challenge. And when we can have that balance of those two things and those things intertwining, that creates a capacity for us to have that deep sense of fulfillment in everything that we do. And one of the unique things about the work that I do is we look at that based on every single individual and their epigenetic expression because what will happen is everyone's different. So when we're looking at creating flow for them, we need to look at them as an individual. We need to look at them as their unique expression. We need to be able to go through assessments to determine, okay, cool. This is the biology that this person has. And this person over here is completely different. So they've got different, what we call like lead dominoes that we need to knock over that you knock over the first one and the rest all just fall into place. And as soon as we understand what that first domino is for someone, well, it just becomes predictable that we can create flow for them. We can create access to them being who they are at their core essence and creating what they're here to be able to create in this lifetime in every area of their life. Yeah, it's so true. When I did my public health thesis 10 years ago for my master's, and one of the things I concentrate on was the different type of self-care versus self-efficacy and literacy. And what I found is if people had just do one, they actually are able to perform multiple that's related to that cohort. And also the more you believe in yourself that you can do it, and it also proportionally relate to how much you're actually doing for yourself. And just like what you're saying in the flow, and you feel in the happier state and the support on yourself is there. You're no longer beating yourself down, feeling like you're not doing enough or things just not working out. What if I have to measure out every single step to, to make everybody else happier? Then you get into a state that you truly are being nice to yourself because you deserve it. And if we don't even treat ourselves well, then... What about like our performance level? Eventually you get to a place that you feel like you build up resentment of the lack of appreciation. The quality of our work is not as great or you have to disappoint the loved ones that are around us. Yeah, 100%. 
in that context, when we look at people's epigenetic expression, there are kind of six core ways that people can go into that people-pleasing mechanism based on people's biology. So we have six different types of epigenetic expressions that we talk about. We've got an activator and they generally go into that people-pleasing mechanism by suppressing who they are because who they are is very confronting to a lot of people. So they play themselves down because they think that they're too much. The next type that we look at is a connector where they're connecting with people, but they people please by just being all things to all people. And the limitation with that is they end up just losing their identity. They don't know who they are. The next type that we look at is the guardian who is selfless by nature because they get all of their energy by giving to other people. And that's the general, like most mothers have a mechanism of that because they have lots of prolactin in their system, which means they want to give more and more and more and more. The next type that we look at is a diplomat and they're very diplomatic by nature. They're the most common in terms of what it looks like to people please because they're always putting other people first and they're always being diplomatic in their approach and being very measured in how they interact and engage with people. So that's the the fourth type. We look at the fifth type, which is ultimately all about getting results. And they people please by just getting the results at all costs. And when they do that, they're called a sensor because they're very sensitive to all of the stimulus which comes in, but they're super high functioning in the mind as well. The next component we go around to is a crusader and they people please by creating access to getting status for things because they put everything in a hierarchy of where it all sits. And as soon as I understand where it is, it's like, well, I'm going to move forward by creating uh, specific results by filtering it through what this result is comparative to this result and actually consistently moving up in that. So when we start to see that there are six different types that are even just people pleasing, we can start to see, okay, cool. Well, we need six different approaches of how people are going to step outside of that. We're going to have six different approaches of how people can even look at self-care. Because in one instance, we might need someone to focus on exercise first because of their biology and another person is going to focus on their environment because their environment stimulates that. And a lot of people who have digestive issues, it's based on their environment. So as soon as we get that sorted out, that creates a shift within that. And when we can understand what that first domino is for each person based on a psychological component of people pleasing or even health in that context of self-care, well, we can instantly start to create this truly personalized and individualized approach to be able to create this deep sense of flow and fulfillment in every area of people's lives. That's so cool. We have to find our domino. I always say it's about your trigger and something that upsets you. Sometimes it's not because the person that is upsetting you. It's something that you experienced way past or even just early on the day, you had a disappointing argument or something fell through and that somehow carried on into the rest of your day. And it's the same effect with what is that domino effect? the original thing that triggered our upset stomach because IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, very commonly is because the serotonin, the stress level, and not necessarily just because your body in the inflammatory state. So uh, finding all these components is a really unique thing to think about. Like Not all of us fit into the same mode. We need to know how unique we are and honor that and <laughs> deal with it, it's okay, and start moving forward. That's so neat. What are some other things that are inside the flow formula that you think people will really benefit from knowing? And how do they even, let's say, they are in a place where they work really hard, they start seeing, oh, things are not really working exactly. How do we go from there? The first thing that we need to do is look at what someone's epigenetic expression is. So as we go through those six different types of before, we need to understand the different hormonal profiles of each of those people because each person will have a slightly different predominance of a hormone or a neurotransmitter. So if we looked at that first one of the activator, that's all based on ACTH, which is adrenaline and testosterone. And that means that they're more likely to enjoy challenge. They're good at sales, all of these different things. And if we understand that that's part of what they're set up for, well, we can actually create them doing things on a day-by-day basis, which are going to light them up much more. And that activated section is where I sit. So it just means that when I'm talking, when I'm speaking, when I'm selling, all of these things light me up and it actually creates the utilization of the hormones in my system in a different way than other people would. When we move around to the connector component, that's all driven by oxytocin. So that becomes the predominant domino for them to knock over. To have oxytocin, then everything starts to fall into place for them. As we move around to the guardian, we go into the 
prolactin section, which is more of the nurturing hormone. The more children that you have as a woman, the more prolactin that you'll have in your system. Then we move around to the diplomat section, which is exactly what you talked about before. They're the ones that need environment because they're driven by serotonin, which is more than 70% of the serotonin is in the gut. So the digestion is the lead thing, the lead indicator that someone something is going wrong for them on a stress level if their digestion goes it's the first thing to go for that then we move around to that sensor option which is driven by vasopressin which is all about mineral balance they generally struggle to keep themselves warm so even just having a coat on them can create more flow for them because they have less circulation through the system and that vasopressin can manage that mineral balance and then we move around to that crusader experience which is all about dopamine so it's all about achievement in that instance And when they can actually have that dopamine where they're consistently ticking off boxes and all of these different things, it creates a capacity for them to be lit up in everything they do. If we go back to that that example that you were talking about before of the diplomat and people pleasing, well, that's based on serotonin as a reward chemical for pleasure seeking behavior. So if we make a good decision, then we get serotonin. If we make a bad decision, we have a serotonin crash. So we start to look at if they can please people, then they're more likely to get more serotonin. So they feel more lit up when they do that. So what we're really doing is we're understanding what is the biology of someone based on the epigenetic expression. So we can channel that in what they're here to be able to create in this lifetime. Because if we can do that, then we're working with what their biology is set up for instead of against it, which is unconsciously what most of us do because we, we have this perception to be, I need to be normal and I need to fit into the mold. And yet our uniqueness is exactly what is required of us to be able to create what we're here to create in this lifetime. And as soon as we know what that is and we start to see the inherent meaning and purpose in our body being the way that it is so that we can create what we're here to create in this lifetime, well, then we can start to end the internal war that we have with ourselves. We can create that inner peace by having permission to be who we are at our core essence and actually bring that to the world, bring that to the world in every aspect of who we are rather than dimming ourselves down for being too much or being a show off or all of these different things, which are shadows, which play out in different spectrums of those experiences. Well, we can just be who we are at our core essence and bring that to the world and understand that's actually what's required of us in this lifetime. Everything shifts for us. Everything starts to fall into place. We have all these synchronicities that occur. We start to have all of these perfect experiences that create this deep sense of fulfillment for us in every area of our life, not just business, not just relationships, all of it, the whole experience of all of the different areas of our life, spirituality, work, relationships, all of these areas can be lit up in every area, which is ultimately what it's all about. Because like you had this experience, I've had this experience, most people have this experience where they've been absolutely nailing it in one area of life. And then everything else is kind of just falling apart in the background just a little bit. You're not even aware of it at the time. You're just like, oh, yes, I'm killing it. And then you look around and you're like, oh, well, the rest of my life's in shambles. Oh, that's okay. though. This is going well. What we're really looking at doing is creating every area of that circle of all of those different experiences that we have being lit up, being fulfilled for us, which is ultimately what it's all about. It's part of my purpose, my passion, my mission in life. And I know it is yours too. So, Yeah, it's so true. This is something I also talk about. When we were kids, we were so good about asking questions, be curious, be ourselves, because no one really restrict us. We are encouraged, good girl, good boy, yes. Like, let me answer those questions. And you're also very easy to say no, because it it should be that simple. You don't like it. It's not going to be aligned to who you are, like what you want it to be. That should be a simple no as a period. It doesn't need to be over-explained. And that's the policing side of us that start coming into play. Oh, I don't want it to be someone who disrupt the norm, as you're calling, or disrupt the peace. Then we start conforming to the next person, to our society, to the neighbor, and feeling like if we can only be a good player, and that's the one we're going to feel satisfaction because nobody is going to judge us. Instead, if you don't judge yourself, you simply put yourself accepting, give yourself more empathy, more credit for everything we have accomplished. It's human. We actually are capable of doing so much and we already have done so much. And it's awesome that you brought up the point of that is the uniqueness that we all need to have. And we sometimes forget our mission, the purpose that we have in life, the why we do this one career versus another. We forget to ask ourselves. We forget to self-reflect. And we start getting into these patterns of complacency or just comfort or feeling like you're stuck, but actually it's your perspective of you not even doing anything about it. So for all our speakers, I love it for us to show that we can be an expert 
in one field or multiple fields. But at the end of the day, we're just human. We can all use some more self-reflection. So every speaker have taken the holistic life assessment to point out, is there a killer in our harmony in our life? And uh, I appreciate it for Cody to share a little bit about your thought process when you saw your result. Um, what was the initial thought that popped into your mind? Anything you can do more or less about? Yeah, the thing that I love most about assessments is when we see where we're at, regardless of what the score is, if we're, even if we're a 10 out of 10 on something, it's like, okay, cool. What does it on 11 look like? Because even if we think that we're at the highest level, we can still actually start to create things beyond that. And that's what I love about tools like this is just starting to actually start to say, okay, cool. This is where I'm currently at. What does the next number look like? If I'm a seven, I think I was a seven out of 10 in terms of love. It's like, okay, cool. What does an eight look like? If I'm a 10 out of 10 in, in my work, okay, cool. What does an 11 look like? How can I take the next step? Because as you were talking about before, most of us fall into the complacency trap where well, good enough is good enough. And we instantly start to sabotage ourselves from actually looking at, okay, well, what if I could receive more? What if I could receive more in my business, in my life, in all of these areas? And the power in any assessment tool is starting to go, okay, cool. I'm going to start to take ownership and awareness of where I'm at. And I'm going to look at, okay, cool. What's the next step? Because even if there's like a five or a three on something, it's not like, okay, well, I need to get that to a 10 because it's too big of a goal. It's like, okay, what does a four look like? What's a five, a six, a seven? And then we just go step by step. And as soon as we can start to take ownership of exactly where we're at, we go, okay, cool. Here I am. Now I want to be able to go over here. It's like the, the thing that they have in shopping centers. I don't know if they have them in the States where you've got a map and it's like, you are here. And it's like, okay, well, you want to go over there. Okay, cool. You need to take this path. You don't just like magically teleport to a 10. You go, okay, cool. If I'm at a three, then I'm going to go, okay, what's a four look like? These are the steps that I need to take. And as soon as we have an assessment tool like this, we can start to go, okay, cool. What is the next step? I can take that next step and I can start to move beyond that. And when we have that frame of reference, we come from this growth mindset rather than that fixed mindset that we look at in, in terms of that. So whenever I see an assessment, that's how I start to look at the results of an assessment. It's like, okay, cool. This is where I'm at. Awesome. You are here. Cool. Let's look at the next thing. Let's look at the next thing in all areas. I love how like data comes together because we've got like, we've got data and then we've got insights from data which is like, okay, cool. Well, if we've got the scores here, we've got, okay, cool. If I'm a seven here, I'm a 10 here. It's not necessarily just about the numbers. It's about what's the next step, but also, okay, what is, what is the ratio between each of these things? Okay, cool. In comparison to all of these areas, they're all pretty high. What about these ones over here? It's about the relationship to those and actually how we can actually create all of those being up much higher so we can have that deep sense of fulfillment in every area of our life. So when I'm looking at any assessment, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking beyond just the numbers. I'm looking for what's the next step and I'm looking for what's the relationship between these and how can I create access to having a life of even deeper fulfillment. So that's the frame of reference that I took to the assessment. That's perfect. Your score doesn't mean it's a fixed score. It's simply a spectrum in your current era. And our experience are just different eras of our life. Doesn't matter if you feel like you're super down, it shouldn't define you. It's just the experience. While we're thinking about this one component of life, whether it's the social support or the love relationship or financial stability, they talk to each other. Now, we wanted to look into the relationship just like what Cody is saying. Now we can figure out how are they interfering or supporting each other. Now we can do something about it. Like my coach, Brandon Bouchard is saying, we wanted to be in the charged life. It's not about setting these dramatic goals and feeling like, oh yeah, this is what I'm aiming for. But I just wanted to be slightly above how I was doing. So I have something looking forward to do, something that I can create a natural momentum to keep going. Instead of feeling like I'm doing too much, and then we went, couldn't get to it, then we feel down. Instead of that slightly moving part of assessment, that's when we feel fulfilled and tapped into all different things. So I know our audience gonna wanted to know more about how to know their own epigenetic type, all different ones we have discussed today, and how to reach out to you to find more information. Yeah, the best way for people to get in contact with me is just to reach out to me on social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook the most, and it's just, just the same on all platforms. It's the Cody McAuliffe, which is my name. 
yeah, you can just reach out to me on any of those platforms to be able to get in contact with me. And then me or my team will get in contact with you to see how you can learn what your epigenetic expression is and how you can actually utilize that to be able to create that life of deep fulfillment for you because that's ultimately what I'm most passionate about, about creating that superhuman society where we can live from our unique innate gifts so that we can have our foundational needs met so that we can create access to those higher needs of growth and contribution and live that life of deep fulfillment in every area. Perfect. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. And I know all you guys are enjoying this episode. Please share with other people. And we do love to hear from you, your feedback from this episode or anything that you wanted to hear more of in the future. So please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Everyone, hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. All right, my friend. How did you love this episode? Make sure to subscribe to our show so you can continue to build your positive intelligence for that beautiful mind of yours to live powerfully and passionate. I know this just the tip of the iceberg. You probably have a lot more question on actually how do I implement those things into my own life? Well, this is the solution. Joining us inside the private Facebook group Go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash powerful passionate where I go live weekly to answer any questions that you have and continue to put more resources for you to help you to get to that point. You can be both powerful and passionate where you're no longer working on any mundane work and truly focusing on the things that matter. You can be both powerful and passionate where you can overcome any mental roadblocks keeping you from success. You can be both powerful and passionate where you feel energized from the moment you woke up to the time you go to bed. Join me and together we can create a life where you can be both powerful and passionate.